Hi, it's The Wire. It is August 17th, 2024. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk about Guido Vianello's victory over McMudoff. It was interesting. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me just say this up front here. It needs to be said I want fans to think about this. I personally feel, as I've said here online, that this is the deepest heavyweight division that I have seen. Right now I've heard in interviews people like Lennox Lewis talking about his era. Right? You know, Klitschko, uh, Shannon Briggs, uh, others. Right? And I've heard people talk about the 1980s, right? Tyson, Michael Spinks, Larry Holmes, Tony Tubbs, Tony Tucker, uh, Oliver McCall, if you remember all those guys. Folks, I'm just telling you, this is the deepest I've seen in heavyweight. Some guys who have been in the shadows, Martin Bacoli, have now come out and have shown you who he is, right? Well, what I want people to do, if you're a skeptic on how deep this heavyweight division is, I want people to look at either the highlights or the full fight. Check my favorites folder here on YouTube. Look at Guido Vianello's legs in this fight. Folks, this is a 30-year-old with young legs. His legs are tremendous. As you're watching him, think to yourself, gee, have I heard about Guido Vianello before tonight? This is a guy who was an Olympian. This is a guy who came up as a tennis player. Right, folks, his legs are a level. You know, at times it looks like McMudoff is standing in cement. McMudoff has no idea, none, how to stop this guy from moving. Let's also talk about Vianello. He's going to be a problem. Right? He's one of the better athletes in the heavyweight division. And understand, this is new. In the pre-fight, they actually talked about how Effie Ajaba, of all people, right? Ajaba has a big punch, but is a bit wooden. Right? Believe it or not, <laughs> it was against Effie Ajaba that Vianello understood that he needed to rededicate himself to staying in shape. Because midway through that fight, and let's not confuse Ajaba with, let's say, Usyk, right? Midway through that fight, he felt that he was winded. So here he is. Now granted, this fight barely makes it to the start of the eighth round. Okay, we understand that. It wasn't, you know, a complete fight. Uh, Vianello got the stoppage. Let me also point out that premium subscribers here online won on this fight, even though the over lost. Right? The bet I proposed was that the fight didn't go the distance. I wasn't expecting Vianello to get the stoppage, but I knew it would be rough and tumble. Right? I thought McMudoff would get the stoppage. Instead, McMudoff got his eye busted up. And Vianello got a well-deserved stoppage. Now let's just briefly talk to gamblers here. The over-under on this fight was six and a half rounds. Think about how excruciating it was. They called the doctor multiple times. <laughs> multiple times before that over-under expired, right? The under part of the over-under. And the doctor let the fight continue. Also, this fight had a first for me. They give McMudoff an eye test in the sixth round. Only the doctor forgot to tell McMudoff to close his good eye. So McMudoff, who you wonder how he could have seen anything out of his bad eye, was able to say, yes, you have three fingers up. Right? <laughs> if you look at the tape, it looks like McMudoff figured that out with his good eye. So if you had the under, you were that close to cashing the ticket. The key with a fight like this is to realize 
that Vianello has great legs. That it's going to take some time for McMudoff to figure out how to make them engage. Right? And of course, the midway point of the seventh round, which is what a six and a half under is, right? Passed. And of course, the stoppage became official at the start of the eighth round. No problem for premium subscribers here because we just had the prop that the fight wasn't going to go the distance. Also, recognize a complicated fighter. Now, this is a mover. I'm talking about Vianello, who does not need to lead with his jab to get his rhythm. Right, folks? He's more complicated than that. This is the guy who's blessed with a great right hand. Right? He's able to lead with power punches. He leads with right hooks. He also has the ability to lead with right uppercuts. And understand, this is a mobile guy. In one of the rounds, I believe it was the end of the uh, second round, he throws a lead left hook. It misses. But the point is, you're dealing with a guy who's moving around when you catch up with him. You can't count on being hit with jabs. He doesn't need the jab for rhythm. Right? This is a guy who's throwing hooks. Now, it's fascinating because Tim Bradley makes the point uh, after McMudoff's eye blows up that Vianello is being too much of a daredevil. Why is he trading with McMudoff? Even with McMood off with one eye. Because, of course, a puncher only has to be right once. Right? Tim Bradley, Hall of Famer, wanted Vianello focusing on the eye. Right? Doing things like moving toward the bad eye. Right? Moving toward where McMood off wouldn't be able to see him clearly. I agree with Bradley. Vianello was taking risks. It's clear he wanted the stoppage. Right? Okay, fair enough. Boxing has an emotional side. Just understand, Vianello at times was a little too brave for his own good. Fortunately for him, McMudoff wasn't able to hit him flush. Let me also make another point, too. And this is a huge part of the fight. Um, you know, you can watch boxing and not notice this part of the sport here. It's one of the most important parts of the fight. Vianello is a master at clinching. McMudoff is just coming in the pocket because he's a big bully type. Right? He wants to come in the pocket. He wants to impose himself on you physically. He's not a guy who can jab his way into the pocket. Right? Have the jab, create an opening, and then come in behind the jab. No, this is the guy who just wants to make it a mental game and is on his front foot early before the eye completely blows up on him and is walking into the pocket well understand Vianello who must have watched Ali films doesn't allow McMudoff to get going in the pocket because he keeps clinching McMudoff and he has the clinching down to such a science that believe it or not when he clinches McMudoff, as they wrestle a little bit, somehow, Vianello was able to turn his back. This is while clinching the guy. Was able to turn his back to McMudoff. That's a move he does repeatedly. So McMudoff in the pocket is basically an exercise in Vianello clinching him. Preventing him from throwing punches. And then being able to turn away and move away. Right, so McMudoff, the thing McMudoff does the worst in the fight, in my opinion, is he doesn't know how to avoid being clinched. Right, I want people to look at Golovkin. Right, Golovkin is a guy who, you know, when he was ruling the roost, you had a hard time clinching him. Right? He would be outside. Golovkin wasn't a guy who wanted to be all the way up on you most of the time, unless you were badly hurt. 
Glovegan wanted to be outside throwing these, you know, curve type punches. And then as fighters moved to clinch him, he would find a way to knock their hands down. Right? A better example of this, old timer Mike McCallum. Right? These are guys who you would reach to clinch him, and unless McCallum himself wanted a breather, he'd knock your hands down. He'd make sure you couldn't clinch him. Right? Look at Loma against George Cambosis. Right? You'll notice there are times in that fight where Cambosis tries to grab Loma, and Loma makes sure he has the body control where he can, you know push a hand away, move away from a hand, knock down a attempt to clinch him. Here, McMudoff is clueless, right? This is the big guy who has gotten by on power, who has not figured out the intricacies of the sport, and here he is getting clinched in the pocket by a mover, right? Folks, it's, it's ridiculous, right? So let me just say, um, the heavyweight division has yet another guy in Vianello who's going to give a lot of people problems. You know, slow-footed guys who are talented, Andy Ruiz, is going to have a hard time against a guy like this because Vianello can stay outside and can, you know, force Andy to come to him. Let me also say, too, that in the sixth round, and it's worth seeing because it's a bit hilarious, McMudoff is losing the fight. So he comes up with the bright idea that he'll try to do what Derek Chisora did against Joe Joyce, right? So here's McMudoff, who is tired of chasing a mover. Vianello's legs are that good, right? McMudoff comes forward, Vianello either ties him up or Vianello moves away, right? So McMudoff is tired. He decides he's going to linger by the ropes, have Vianello come over to him, and then try to hit him with a counter right hand or a left hook or something like that. The problem is he's too blind by that point in the fight. So he's over by the ropes. Also, Vianello is too clever. He's the guy with great legs who knows to stay outside. Right? Let's just say he has legs that Joe Joyce doesn't have. Right? So Vianello, look at the start of the sixth round. It's worth a laugh. Right? You'll see McMudoff back up by the ropes. Let's just say, even though McMudoff is a big rough and tumble guy, he does not have the counter-punching capability of a Derek Chisora, right? It's moments like that where you appreciate great counter-punchers, right? When you see a guy who, quite frankly, isn't a great counter-puncher and can't pull off his plan of luring the guy winning the fight over to the ropes so he can land something big, turn the fight around, possibly get a surprise knockdown. Let me uh, just say, too, that um, Vianello, the uppercut is excellent, right? It's excellent. It's sudden. He covers ground with the uppercut. You need to be conscientious of the ability to cover ground, of what I call ring coverage, with these mover guys, right? Because understand, you know, it looks like he's moving away from McMudoff, right? He's multi-directional. When I say great legs, folks, he can move in any direction on demand. But the key is, the guy's a constant threat. Because that right hand really is special. And there were times in this fight where McMudoff has his hands up. And Vianello is able to thread the needle. Now, we just saw a fight involving Jared Anderson, that Martin Bacoli fight, where Jared Anderson never figures out what to do with Martin Bacoli's uppercut. Right? Never. Now, I don't know, as I make this video, whether Vianello has a left uppercut. He didn't have to show it. Bacoli does. But just pay attention to the fact that 
that uppercut really is Vianello's best punch other than a wide right he can throw that hits you on the side of your head. Right, so this is a 30-year-old. By the way, 30 these days in the heavyweight division makes him one of the younger heavyweights. Right, so you're talking about a young guy with even younger legs. At a time when you have big clunky heavyweights, understand what movement does for you. Um, you're able to avoid the shots of a big clunky heavyweight and sometimes that big clunky heavyweight is going to get tired chasing you around like McMudoff does here. Right, I'm telling you, start of the sixth round, McMudoff backs up to the ropes. He's tired of chasing the rabbit. Right, think about the guys at heavyweight right now. Ask yourself the question, how well do they move? Are there big clunky guys who might have a problem with this guy's movement? Right, I take Gili Zhang over Vianello, but let's just say Vianello would have a decided foot speed advantage on Zhang. Right, also keep in mind, Vianello, while he has a jab, he's not committed to it. Maybe that's a flaw. Who knows? But in this fight, he's leading with power shots. So the fact that against, let's say, a Zhili Zhang, he'd be fighting a southpaw. It wouldn't throw him as much as it threw someone like Joe Joyce, who really uses his jab to establish rhythm. Right? Excellent fight. Um, Guido Vianello is going to give a lot of guys a lot of problems in this the deepest heavyweight division I have ever seen right food for thought anyway that's how I saw it keep in mind too um, it's not readily apparent on film here because both guys are roughly the same height but understand Vianello with these legs is 6'6 six, six. Right, he was facing six five and a half McMudoff. Just to understand, these are tall heavyweights. Right? When I'm talking about him fighting a big clunky heavyweight, understand I'm talking about him fighting heavyweights his size. Right? He'd be able to move around the ring. Right? Uh, Deontay Wilder would look like a potted plant compared to this guy. Right? Of course, Wilder would only have to be right once. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. As they point out on the telecast, this guy only has two losses. I'm telling you the Effie Ajabo fight could have gone either way. Right? That fight goes the distance. Think it through. You just heard me mention Deontay Wilder. Understand, Effie Ajabo is one of the hardest punchers in the heavyweight division. And this guy, Vianello, went the distance with him. Right? The other fight, Johnny Rice. Johnny Rice is complicated. Right? But understand, Vianello was winning that fight. And then lost that fight on cuts. Right? So, understand, this guy's mindset is that he didn't give himself the best chance to win against Effie Ajaba, right? He now realizes he wasn't in the shape that he should have been, right? He was clearly in great shape here. This guy has never been blown out in a pro fight, right? Ten years ago, he fought McMudoff in an amateur fight or semi-pro fight, and McMudoff stopped him, right? But folks, as a pro, this is a different fighter. He just beat McMudoff. Right? Understand, against heavyweights who can't match his legs here, who can't keep up with this level of movement, and who aren't defensively blessed. So, Vianello will be able to catch them by surprise with lead left hooks, lead up right uppercuts, lead right wide hooks. Right? Understand in any such fight, if Fianello is the underdog, and let's face it, the public barely knows the guy. 
He's going to be a live underdog. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. If you get one takeaway from this video, all I ask is that you look at the highlights or the fight and that you look at Vianello's legs. Folks, they're among the best in the heavyweight division. Just that alone would give a lot of guys a lot of problems. Those are my thoughts. I look forward to reading yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.